Hello, I am Pastor Ernest L. Dees with Agape Holistic Life Changing Ministries. As always, I am humbled and honored to share with you what thus says the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, oh gracious Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, for this season and every season. Father, you know how man is because you made it. And Lord God, you made at least four seasons of the year, knowing that some like winter, summer, spring, and there are others that like fall. So Lord God, you, you, you made the various seasons, allowing the plants to grow and go through their changes and letting us see the beauty, oh God, of your handiwork. And Father, we are thankful. Now, Lord God, we are praying that you bless this class in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As always, I thank God for all of our church members, those that have partnered with us, amen, as well as our well wishes and supporters right here in the United States and throughout the world. Before we get started, I want to share with you uh, one announcement that we have for this week. Our dearly beloved Elder McIntyre, who is the chairman of our presbytery here at Agape, I wanted to make sure that I make this announcement. And I want to make sure that I comply. There is one announcement for this week. We will only have the 1130 worship service this upcoming Sunday. There will be no school of knowledge. However, the doors of the church will be open at 11 a.m. for your convenience. Please be here at 1130 as we look forward to worshiping with you. Be safe while enjoying your holiday. May God bless you richly. Now let's take a look at our class for the evening. Last week, we talked about a positioned church. And it was my intention to do a series on the church. However, I want to just kind of make a little change here for this week. Um, and I'll tell you what our topic is in just a little bit. But as we reflect on the positioned church, the church is positioned by God to prosper and to be successful regardless of what the world systems hurls against her. And I thank God that we are a part of God's church. And be reminded, God has a universal church. As I said, a universal church. And I thank God that I'm a part of that church. I want to talk today uh, from the thought, particularly keeping the season in mind, <clears throat> in all things, give thanks. In all things, give thanks. Our scripture lesson is coming from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. And it reads on this wise. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, I thank you mightily for this season. And I pray to God that many of us will take advantage and give you praise and thanks first for allowing us to enjoy such a time as this. 
Now, it is not always easy to give God thanks. Well, Pastor, what in the world are you saying? Well, however, the word of God encourages us to give thanks, to give God thanks when the going is good as well as when the going is not so good. We ought to thank God even during times when the hand of God is upon us to correct our erring ways. And perhaps some of you right now are nodding your head in agreement with me. <clears throat> We find in Hebrews chapter 12, around at verse 11, it says, No chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Lord, I thank you. We find in Psalm 119, verse 70 through 72, King David weighs in on this, and he says, I delight in your law. Now listen, how many of us can say this? <clears throat> it was good for me to be afflicted. Can you give God thanks? even during your affliction. That's why I said from the beginning, it may not be always easy to give God thanks. But I want to encourage you tonight, regardless of what you are going through, try to muster up a thanks for God. Listen. <clears throat> it was good for me to be afflicted that I might learn your statutes. Keep listening. The law from your mouth is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of gold and silver. That sounds like someone who is thankful. Thank you, Jesus. Now, how can we thank God when we are grieving? Yes. How can we thank God when we are sorrowful? <clears throat> How can we thank God when we are hurting? <clears throat> well, often our emotions play tricks on us and try to be in charge of us. Perhaps your emotions right now are challenging you, trying to tell you and trying to dictate your life, particularly during this season. When God, by his might and Holy Spirit, have put in us, or should I say have put us in charge of our emotions, Yes, he has. There comes a time when we have to talk to our emotions and tell them instead of sorrowing, we are going to praise the Lord. Pastor, can I do that? Yes, you can. God put you in charge of your emotions. You can speak to your emotions. I know, keep listening. You can say, we are going to praise the Lord. Command your mouth to praise the Lord. Command your hands to clap for joy. Command your feet to dance before the Lord. Now, they may be slow 
in obeying you. But work with them until they obey your command. Thank you, Jesus. It is hard to be sorrowful while praising God. I don't know how you really can be sorrowful because what God does, he gets in the midst and, and, to, and begin to relieve your sorrow. He gets in the midst and start praising with you. We must remind ourselves of God's word that teaches us that sorrow, hurt, pain, and peace coexist in this broken world that we live in. Yes, they do. But Jesus has comforted us with these words found in John 16 and 33. I have told you those things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. You have tribulation. You have sorrow. You have hurt. You have pain. You have disappointment. But listen to what Jesus continues to say. He said, but take heart. Be of good cheer. In other words, cheer up. I have overcome the world. Those are, those are words of Jesus. Hang close with Jesus. And he will see you through these challenging and tough times. And you will find that you have more to praise God for than you have to sorrow for. I'm a wounded healer myself. I'm not just talking off the top of my head. I know a thing or two about a thing or two. Because I walked this journey for a minute now. We find in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18, it encourages us by teaching us that we do not lose heart. That is, don't faint. Don't fall by the wayside. Don't continue to wallow in our sorrow as if we have no hope. Even though, listen, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, Lord, I thank you, is working for us a far exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. While we do not look at the things which are, which are seen, but at things which are not seen. Follow me now. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Thank you, Jesus. There's a a saying of mine that I, I love to repeat because it's so true. We must look beyond the moment. Sometimes we get so caught up in the moment and that we cannot see beyond the bubble. But, to take, but today I'm encouraging you to look beyond the moment. God's word is encouraging you to look beyond the moment. Sometimes we have to see the invisible. And how do we see it? Through the word of God. How do we see it? By faith. 
God's word say it can be done. I ask you to decree and declare victory. Although with the natural eye, it seems to be nowhere in sight. The claiming anyhow. The just shall live by faith. Claim it anyhow. Well, pastor, I don't feel it. You're not going to feel it sometime. Well, pastor, I don't see it. Which eye are you looking with? Are you looking with the eye of faith or just your natural eye? There are some things the natural eye will never see. Claim it anyhow. Thank you, Jesus. I know what I'm saying firsthand. I've tried God on numerous occasions. God is a promise keeper. And he cannot lie. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I give you praise. Pray according to God's word. If God will honor anything, he will definitely honor his word. Pray God's word. That's what I do so often. I pray God's word. A real true prayer really, really originates with God, filters through us, and goes back to God. Those are the prayers that God really honors and answers. Many of us are familiar with Job and the many challenges that he had. Even in the midst of his hurt, his disappointments, adverse comments from the closest of friends. He said in Job 6 and 10, then I would still have this consolation, relief. I would still have this relief. I would still have this comfort. My joy in unrelenting pain, having joy in unrelenting pain, watch this, that I had not denied the words of the Holy One. I didn't fall by the wayside. I didn't clamber up and wouldn't, wouldn't embrace God, I wouldn't embrace Jesus Christ. Although I was going through all kinds of troubles and pains and hurt and disappointments. I, didn't, I did not deny God not one time. I embrace God. I was a walking, living example. Sure, Job had his flaws. But God was able to look beyond the flaws. And realize that he was a mature and upright man before God. To say that another way, Job began to say, at least I can take comfort. In this, despite the pain, and I'm saying to you the same thing, this, despite the pain, I have not denied the words of the Holy One. Now, if you do not have, now watch this. There are so many things in life that get us all bent out of shape. There are so many things in life that upset us. There are so many things in life that are triggers for us. And we go off the deep end because we're, we're living in the moment and we don't see beyond the moment. And we get all upset, all frustrated. Sometimes, sometimes we get frustrated and all bent out of shape because we don't have a babysitter. I'm just being practical. And I would say that's not the thing to get all bent out of shape and get depressed about. Watch this. But I encourage you in the moment when you don't know where your babysitter is coming from, 
in the moment when all everything seemed, seemed to be falling apart, that's the moment right there. Start praising God for the baby. What did you say, Pastor? I said, yes. In that moment, when, when there's plenty of frustration going on and don't have a babysitter and many other things could be going on right in that moment. Start praising God for that baby. The baby may be crying. Maybe uh, rambunctious or whatever the case is. In that moment right there, start praising God for that baby. No doubt. Listen to this now. No doubt. There are a number of people who would just love to trade places with you. How many barren wounds are out there that would just love to give birth to a child? So I say to you, in the moment, regardless of what the moment is, in the moment of your frustration, in the moment, are you being depressed and all stretched out? That's the moment to start giving God thanks. That's the moment to start praising God, lifting up God, and watch God bring deliverance from somewhere or somehow. Or he'll give you the endurance of what you need to get through it. I know what I'm talking about. Virtually, anything you may want to complain and get depressed about, start right there praising and thanking God. I know I'm talking to somebody. If you, if you listen to these words, you will find comfort and you will find a way to move beyond the moment and find some peace and joy in the process. There was a time when Job, when jobs were hard to find, there was a time when jobs were hard to find. Nowadays, figure, figuratively speaking, but almost true, you can almost find work on every corner. And all these things give thanks. Be grateful. Give thanks. And don't only wait until, amen, November to praise and give God thanks. Do it 24-7 if you possibly can. 12 months, amen, a year. 52 weeks a year. 365 days a year, I'm giving thanks. I'm reminded of a song by Walter Hawkins, I'll just mention a few of the lyrics. Be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. God has not promised me sunshine. That's not the way it's going to be. But a little rain mixed with God's sunshine, a little pain, makes me appreciate the good times. Be grateful. God desires to feel your longing, but he can't afford to let you feel only good. Then you can appreciate the good times. Be grateful because there is someone else who is worse off than you. Be grateful. Because there's someone else who would love to be in your shoe. Be grateful. Even though hard times, the good times, too. Be grateful. Be grateful. We find in Hebrews 13, 15, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of our lips that openly profess his name. But do not forget to do good and to share. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. 
instead of charging God foolishly, let's begin praising and thanking God. Listen, if we stop complaining about what we do not have and start listing, write them down, listing and thanking God for what we do have, oh, thank you, Jesus. I'll stop, now listen at this one, I'll stop complaining about our ailments and what all hurts. And start praising God for the parts of our body that is working just fine and is pain free. I got a feeling the good will always outweigh the bad. Thank you, Jesus. Can we right now in this moment start praising our way through? It is easy, now listen at this, it is easy to stand on the sideline and complain about what others are doing. Can we be thankful for what others are doing? Because all are doing, because all some are doing is standing on the sideline complaining about what others are doing. Those that are doing do not have time to complain about those that are on the sidelines because they are busy doing what others should be helping get done. Yes, some have a merry spirit in a Martha's world. Let me say that again. Some have a Mary's spirit in a Martha's world. Stay tuned. Come to School of Knowledge. Come to Word Empowerment. Come to Morning Worship Services. You will find more on that subject. They have chosen the best thing. They are busy covering for your slackness. That is those that are just sitting on the sidelines sitting on the stool of do nothing, complaining as opposed to being grateful and giving thanks and helping. Thank you, Jesus. There are those that are working hard in the vineyard, covering for other slackness, and they are doing it with praise and thanksgiving. Standing on the sideline watching others make sausage is a far cry from being in the mix helping make the sausage. Get involved. Get involved in ministry. Give God thanks right where you are and get off the sideline and get in the mix of God's business. Now listen at this. Ministry comes with a price tag. It cost Jesus his life. It cost Apostles Paul and Peter their lives. Sometimes it calls for long days and sometimes longer nights. However, in the midst of Jesus' ministry, he rejoiced. Thank you, Jesus, and gave thanks. Thank you, Jesus. He said, thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, I acknowledge and openly and joyfully, thank you, Jesus, to your honor that you have hidden these things from the wise and clever and learned and revealed them to babies. Reading from the Amplified Bible, that is to the childish, to the untaught, to the unskilled. Yes, Father, I praise you that Such was your gracious will and good pleasure. All things have been entrusted and delivered to me by my Father. And no one fully knows and accurately understands the Son except the Father. And no one fully knows and accurately understands the Father 
except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son deliberately wills to make him known. Jesus said, come to me. That includes you. All you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I'm gentle, I'm meek, and humble, and lowly in heart. And you will find rest that is relief, and ease, and refreshment, and recreation, and blessed quiet for your souls. Thank you, Jesus. My yoke is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh, or hard, or sharp, or pressing, but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to be born. With the cares, listen at this, with the cares of the world on Jesus' shoulders, he found time to praise and thank his Father. David said in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. In all of our giving of thanks and celebrations, now listen at this. In all of our giving, in all of our thanks, in all of our celebrations, have we taken out time to celebrate and give thanks to the one that brought us salvation from sin? Have we given thanks for salvation itself? Lord Jesus, I thank you for your awesome sacrifice on Calvary's rugged cross. I thank you for your deliverance from the penalty of sin. I thank you, thank you Jesus, for delivering us from the habits of sin. And Father, I'm looking to eventually be fully delivered from the very presence of sin. As I prepare to close, to come to a close, I just want to highlight a few verses that really got my attention on giving. We find in Psalm 103, and I pray that this will bless your heart. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and the get now all his benefits. Thank you, Jesus, who, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. That's, that's plenty right there to give God thanks for. Sometimes the days can feel weary and life can be hard. Circumstances might change around us or we find ourselves facing huge battles. But remember, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, never fails. Isn't that wonderful? They never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great Father, great Lord God, here's your faithfulness. We find also in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through 7. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith. You have been taught, abounding, thank you Jesus, in it with thanksgiving. I say to you, particularly during this season, I'm thanking God for how he had a plan for salvation for all mankind. And he's welcoming you all of you, to be born again of water and of the Spirit. We here at Agape, we'd be glad to baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Show God how, how grateful and thankful you are by giving your life to him. For Jesus tells us, you must be born again of water and of the Spirit. I pray that we've said something that will bless you. Amen. In this class tonight, for your continued growth in God's word. We have in-person school of knowledge, but we, won't be, we will not be here this coming Sunday now. 
But we normally we have in-person school of knowledge at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. In-person worship on Sunday morning at 11.30. Now we will be here at the 11.30 hour, so please come on out. The doors of the church will be open by 11 a.m. this coming Sunday. We're looking forward to seeing you. We have online word empowerment on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Do not forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please share with your friends on Facebook as well as others. For more information on the plan of salvation, please call 678-759-8989. Let us pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, we thank you many, many times over. Lord God, we give you praise and we give you thanks. Lord God, help us to praise you and thank you, regardless of whether things are going well or they're not going so well. Oh Lord, our God, remember those that are traveling. Oh God, and keep us all safe and bring us back together. Just we pray and we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. May God bless you richly.